What's up guys, in today's video I'm gonna try to win this grand challenge using this brand new Hog Rider deck. So you can see Ian actually pushed to number one in the world with this deck and you probably haven't seen anything like this before. It has the giant skeleton in the deck, which is going to be good at blocking the bridge, maybe if you're against a graveyard deck, or supporting the hog rider, because when the giant skeleton dies, it's going to be able to kill some of their support cards that they use to defend the hog. You got the tombstone, which is going to be incredible on defense, especially with the guards, it can stop just about anything. Earthquake is going to allow you to break through buildings, and the archer queen, as you guys already know, is just insane on defense and offense. And then you got the tornado, which is going to help you get some king tower activations and pull things into the giant skeleton death bomb all right guys we're eight and one right now so we'll try to get the 12 win in our first match here and we have tombstone in our starting hand which i'm definitely going to you know go ahead and play because it's a very safe starting play because even though it doesn't apply pressure it prevents your opponent from being able to kind of pressure it's it's just a really nice defensive card to play that's just always safe to open with so you have dark prince dark prince and bandit so, I mean, you got to imagine it's probably some type of bridge spam deck. You know, maybe it's P.E.K.K.A., maybe it's Mega Knight, but that's definitely what I'd go with. With the Princess, now I'm thinking it's Log Bait, so I was completely wrong. Log Bait's a very good matchup because I have the Log, I have the Hog, which is difficult for him to stop, and I have the Earthquake if he has a building. So, multiple different cards that are going to be getting me a solid amount of value in this matchup, I would say. So, that Queen is going to walk into Radius of the Princess, which is great, so... Get a lot of value out of that queen there, and it's still up. It's going to force more elixir out of him. He's forced to go for rascals. So I guess we could actually log this and then just go for a tornado to activate the king tower. And then we get guards down right on time on top of those goblins. And you can see I actually managed to fully counter that goblin barrel. That was really, really satisfying to watch because as you could tell, um, I knew he was playing it to the left. I made sure to pay attention to that. And sure enough, we were able to fully counter it. And yeah, that was some really clean defense. King activation. And with that hog right there, we actually take back the lead. So this is just the perfect start to this game. I would say Tombstone going to deal with the Dark Prince there. Um, it will almost die in the process, but still, I th it actually does die. But still, that's fine. I mean, it's still a 3 for 4 trade, so pretty good value, I would say. And maybe he goes Princess at the Bridge or something. I wouldn't be surprised because a lot of Log Bay players do that, obviously. I guess we'll see. And uh, yeah, right as I say that, he goes Princess at the Bridge right on time. So... Queen at the bridge here from us, just because it forces, I mean, you know, he had to spend 5 elixir, and at the end of the day, the reason I'm doing it is just to kind of mess with his cycle, and why would I want to play it in the back when he's got a rocket, and guess what, now that he's just his rock, I, I'm going to ignore that, because I don't have my login cycle first of all, and this is going to allow me to build a really good push, with a giant skeleton in the hog, you can see giant skeleton tanking for the hog, and with him not having a lot of elixir, because he went for the goblin barrel you see we're able to get some massive damage with that hog rider once again taking back the lead so i guess we could go for a queen here and we could play it like a little bit in front of the tower it might be tempting for him to rock it but i don't think he'll be able to i will not go for a giant skeleton though because i have a feeling if i were to do that he would get a really nice rocket which i wouldn't really want so i'm actually just gonna earthquake this because it's going to get the rascal girls in one shot so the queen can just take them out and then maybe even get a hit on the tower yeah look at that we're just now at this point gaining a massive lead now over him the hog is not going to get a connection but he had to spend what was that how much elixir was that 11 just to stop it cannon cart dark prince and snowball that's 11 elixir just to stop a four elixir hog so that's a bit of an overcommitment, if you ask me, but you can see that's why it's difficult for him, you know, without a building stopping it. And the thing is, even if he had a building, it would still be hard because of the... So Earthquake gonna come in here, it's gonna take the shield off the Dark Prince, and guess what? That's all gonna die to the bomb, and he... Oh, 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 the tower was in range. Okay, that's why he called the good game, I guess. I didn't even notice that at first, but then I realized, like... Oh! Is he saying good game because it was in range, or because he thought he was just going to lose anyway? But either way, nice and easy win there, and uh, three more wins to go to get 12. Okay, in the next match here against Pedro, and if this is who I think it is, this is actually a very good Mortar player who has gotten some good finishes with Mortar the last couple of um, months, and he's actually going to give us a King Tower activation. Very surprising. Maybe he didn't think I had the Tornado, and he has the Tornado too, so he goes for a Minor... Spear Goblins, Tornado, so it's some sort of cycle deck. It's probably not Mortar, just because Mortar, I can't imagine it possibly having a Tornado. That just, that synergy doesn't make any sense. It's Fireball. Maybe it's the Minor Wall Breaker deck, the one with Bomb Tower, the one that you guys may know who he is, a really good French player named Remy Ellie. 
um, and it looks like that's what it is, so my guess was correct, and that was a horrible, horrible um, Valkyrie, because as you can tell, um, he got it down really late. High Giant Skeleton, because I didn't want him to go for, okay, and he went for the Magic Archer anyway, that's great. So basically the whole point of what I was doing, I ended up messing it up, but it's okay because I still, I mean, I I'm still winning, and I think it's fine. So he's probably just going to Tornado that, um, and I can Queen because it's going to take out the Wall Breakers and then the Counter Push I'm going to get off of it is going to be ridiculous. And keep in mind, the only good answer he actually has to the Queen is the Valkyrie. I don't know why he did that Bomb Tower. To me, that seemed like a pretty questionable play because it gave me a free Earthquake and then the Queen still got a shot in the tower. He would have been much better off just playing the Valkyrie and I don't know why he didn't. That was really interesting. But either way, great situation here going into Double Elixir and I think I'm for sure just going to set up a Tombstone here and I'm going to ignore that Miner because he decided, okay, that was a very bad Fireball because he already spent a Miner so huge overcommitment coming out from him. Hog is coming in, it's kind of going to get stuck, which is a little annoying, but, um, I guess that's fine. Is it really? I don't know, but, gonna have to deal with it regardless. And, I don't know if he's going to tornado this back, uh, I thought he was, he would have tornado that back. Okay, that was kind of interesting. I'm just going to go log here, and, yeah, I'm probably going to ignore the miner, because, I don't know, again, he didn't play it in the safe spot, so... The main thing I want to ensure here is I get something down to kill this Magic Archer ASAP. Because that is scary. Um, Good Earthquake to kill that. That Magic Archer was a little interesting there, I gotta admit. Probably Tornado that back. It's all gonna get hit by the bomb. That was really satisfying to watch, not gonna lie. He's going to go Spear Gobs, we could Guards, I guess. And then if he tries to Magic Archer line up with the Giant Skeleton, I'm going to go for like a Prediction. Okay, that was not the best Magic Archer, if I'm being honest. I'm going to Earthquake. The reason why I say that wasn't a good Magic Archer is because I can just straight up ignore that. Yeah, it's going to get some value, but he's still having to spend a ton on defense, I can tell you that. So at this point, we probably could just cycle Earthquakes and Logs. And just try to ensure that he doesn't get a Magic Archer to line up. Because at this... Okay, we can just Hog now. And Magic Archer's going to stay locked on that. And now Earthquake. We should be fine. Do I just need a Log? Well, I just realized we need to just get an Earthquake down, and it's GG. That's enough damage. I'm not even going to log the tower. There we go. Get the win here against a very, very good player. He definitely made a couple mistakes. I'm not saying I played that perfectly, but I'm pretty sure that's a good matchup for him because he does have Tornado and Bomb Tower, two counters to the Hog. And just to prove that yeah, you can see he's fourth in the world right now, and then he finished 93rd in the world last season, and then finished 13th as his best finish. So, sure enough, right when I said at the beginning, I knew he was a very good player. We managed to win in a matchup that, like I said, I personally think is a good matchup for him. Um, I'm not saying he has a hard counter, but I definitely think it's his slightly. He just made a couple bad defenses at the beginning, like the queen locking on, because the Valkyrie came down late, and then also kind of a questionable bomb tower that he used to defend the queen that... Just gave me a free Earthquake, but either way, good player, and we managed to get the win. So, looks like we're against another Log Bait player here, potentially, because you see, starts with Goblin Barrel first play. So, we can just set up a Tombstone here, and he's got the Mother Witch, so that's very interesting. <sighs> and that's going to get an absurd amount of value, so that's actually really annoying. Um, He's got the... Okay, that was really dumb. The Log apparently pushed... That, that was really dumb. I don't know how the Mother Witch didn't get hit by that log, but that was really unlucky. Either way, I'm pretty sure this is all gonna... Like, almost die. Okay, that was just really unlucky. I... I that's just... 
that's probably the most annoying start I've ever seen in such a long time. And the truth is, I didn't really do anything wrong. There were just so many unfortunate things that happened there. One was that log that didn't push back the Mother Witch because the giant skeleton ended up, like, shoving it to the side, I think. And then, I, like, I didn't know what he was using, so pretty much there was no way I could have avoided what happened. That's just kind of bad luck at that point, but I think we made the most of it. I mean, I truly think that because I didn't take very much damage. I do have my king activated, and now at least we know what he's using, right? So got to think of the positives. Even though that was really annoying, there are some positives about it. So I'll try to keep that in mind going forward. Um, So he's just going to load up here. And I kind of got a tombstone in the middle, even though it's better to play it right on top of the RG. I don't really got a choice because of the stupid bomber just splashing everything. That is just really annoying. I, I don't know what else to say. That is really annoying. So he's got a... Okay, so he's got tons of counters to the hog. Um, Well, not a ton, but he's got Skarmy. And please don't tell me he has, like, a fisherman, too. Because if he does, then at that point, this is, like, almost impossible. We probably have to Giant Skeleton, too, just to take out all that stuff behind the Giant Skelly. And maybe we log to push this back here. Go for a Tornado. And go for a Tombstone to not push back the RG. <sighs> I'm not trying to, like, make too many excuses here, but... I think this was just a hard counter, if I'm being honest. I don't know what this deck was. I mean, maybe part of it, I was I was just caught off guard by the deck, but I don't know, man. That seems like a pretty... We did fully counter. That was a clean tornado, but that, that was a joke. I, I don't know. That, that was just really annoying. I, I mean, the start and then the, the other issue... First of all, no one even uses Mother Witch anymore, but... Yeah, I mean, as you could tell, it got so much value that game. He's got arrows, which kills the guards. I don't know what that was, but it certainly was pretty annoying for me to play against. Yeah, that was an annoying game. That has to be one of the most annoying games I've had in a long time. I mean, losing is always frustrating, but there was just something about that game that made it more annoying, and I can't quite put my finger on it. It might have just been the deck. I don't know, but anyway, try to bounce back in this one. That's the nice thing that we still had another life, so, you know, we're not out of it yet. So, Pekka, alright, I mean, I could actually go hog into this, because the giant skeleton is going to tank for the Pekka, and it's just going to, the Ewiz will die, so that's, yeah, I mean, that was actually, that was worth it, I would say. The hog got a shot, he had to spend four elixir to take care of the hog, and we ended up getting a hit, so, not something insane, you know, but definitely definitely was worth it i would say so we prevent okay this is getting a little bit okay I think that's GG, sadly. Man. <sighs> I guess we can activate the queen. <sighs> that's depressing. Pretty much lost at the very start, and there's nothing I could do about it. He kind of just went in and railed everything I played with the Golden Knight, and there you go. Golden Knight do do that sometimes. That's sad. I hate the games that just are over so quickly, and it just feels like there's nothing you can do about it, you know? It's sad, but 
it is what it is. I guess he did a good job pressuring and identifying I didn't have anything good in cycle or enough elixir to defend. Um, to tell you the truth, I felt like both of those losses, I probably didn't play the best I could have. Um, especially considering they both weren't close, but... <sighs> I don't know, man. That was... That was disappointing, to say the least. Instead of starting another Grand Challenge, I'll tell you what. I'm probably going to hop into a couple ladder games. I don't know if I've ever done this before. Like, when I do a Grand Challenge video, it's always like I either f just finish out the Grand Challenge or... Like, I start up another. That's what I've been doing recently. But I think I'll hop into some ladder games. <laughs> Yo, my last four Grand Challenges were tens. For me, that's trash. Because usually I can win a Grand Challenge 50% of the time I play it. But at least I'm consistent. What the heck, man? I mean, you see the 12 before that. But four t tens in a row? What in the world? Anyway, yeah, we're going to play a couple ladder games. I mean, I'm reasonably high up, 7, 18, and yeah, let's go. All right, here we go. I still can't believe that. Four 10 wins in a row? Must be some, like, curse or something at this point. Like, I don't know what to say. That's very strange. I mean, obviously, I can, I'm good at Grand Challenges. I have the 100 badge on my profile, so I don't know what the deal is recently. The last few Grand Challenges I've played. Yikes. Um, so we go queen here. So he's got prince. Zap. I mean, guards are very good against the prince. That's obvious. Um, He's going to go mega minion. It's probably, if I had to guess what this is, it's giant double prince, right? Because, yeah, we, I mean, when you see dark prince, prince, and mega minion zap, that's what you're probably going to go with. And he didn't go minor, so this is a perfect time to send in a hog because his cycle's kind of messed up, as you can tell. And that's all going to get hit by the... So that's perfect utilization of that giant skeleton there because the prince is going to get hit by the death bomb. The hog got so many hits because he... Well, the tower was targeting the giant skeleton. You saw it was tanking for it. So everything about that push went exactly the way I wanted it to. And now it looks like we're finally getting a very, very good matchup. I would say the last couple matchups I lost weren't exactly great matchups, but this one most definitely is very, very good for me because the guards, the tombstone, and the queen are all going to get a tremendous amount of value. So we can go to activate the queen's ability here. We can go giant skeleton here just to pull that dark prince over. And that was kind of a questionable... Okay, he's so low on elixir. This hog is probably going to almost take his tower just because... Yeah, that will not almost take it. That was a little bit, I guess, of a, uh, I don't know what you would say, but, oh no, I misclicked the tornado. It's not going to act. Oh, never mind. I still did. What the heck? I, I, I played it a tile higher though than I, but anyway, still great King Tower activation. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys probably knew about that, but if you didn't, well, then clearly you, you see you can tornado the E-Wiz to the, um, you know, to chain like that. Pretty easy to do. I mean, it just takes a tiny bit of practice. Um, I mean, actually, it's probably, of all the king activations, one of the easier ones, without a doubt. Probably one of the hardest king tower activations, just because it requires you to be very precise with your placement and the timing, would be the one where you... You do the, um... What do you call it? It's the, oh wow, he had a fireball that, that's so unfortunate. Like, that queen probably got like 15 elixir worth of value. It defended, it forced a fireball out of him, that was just insane. The hardest one is the minor, the tornadoing the wall breakers, because, uh, well, as I was saying, is it, um, requires a very precise placement and timing, and if you get it wrong even slightly, you'll mess it up, um... But with practice, you could even get that. I could say I usually can do that maybe like maybe like 70% of the time. If I mess it up, what usually will happen is, is the wall breakers will die in the process before they end up hitting the king tower. But at least it'll never like usually hit my tower if I end up messing it up. Um, anyhow, we end up getting to 608th in the world. And yeah, this will probably be the final game of the video. 
So here we go in our last match here against NS. So we'll see if we can end off of a win despite us getting those, you know, two unfortunate losses um, earlier on. I'll go for a Hog Rider here and uh, see what he wants to do. He's going to go for an E-Wiz. So what I kind of want to do is Tornado the Ghost to the King Tower. You can do it without it getting hit, and it's actually really easy to do, especially if the Ghost is in the middle or, like, on the... Well, on this side of the bridge, if it's on the right, or this side, if it's on the left, it's very, very easy to tornado without it getting a hit. I'm pretty sure if it's on the outside, meaning, like, it's on this side of the bridge or that side, I think it may get a hit no matter what, but don't quote me on that. But all I know is if it's the middle, it's extremely easy to do. So... Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is Paco. We could probably go for a high tombstone here. If he goes Magic Archer, I'm going to log EQ it, most likely, just because it's really annoying. Um, I don't know if that's what he's even going to do. Yeah, he is. I kind of changed my mind. Do I even want to do it because I've already played a giant skeleton? Probably not. I don't think it's worth it. We'll go for a log here, though, just to cycle because I'm at 10 elixir. Very good queen in the back. I need fireballs it. Okay. Right. I think we could go guards, hog, queen activation. Because what this is gonna do, it's kinda gonna make him panic, right? Like he didn't want to drop a Pekka because of the guards, because the guards are so good at distracting it. So I had a feeling that was gonna happen. And even if he went for a P.E.K.K.A. and defended adequately, the Tombstone can pretty much fully defend a P.E.K.K.A. Because of the fact that it spawns two Skeletons. So this is just a matchup that should be ridiculously easy for me, if I had to say. Um, I'm gonna go for a Log here. And Magic Archer's kind of annoying, so I'm gonna go for Queen on it to take it out. Okay, that kind of lined it up for him. That was a little bit annoying, I'm not gonna deny that. Gonna Earthquake this just to kill it and then go for a Tombstone here. And maybe the way to play this game is not so much offense and kind of more defense just because it really should be almost impossible for him to break through if I play this well. And I say that, but then, you know, I could end up losing. But it is looking pretty good for me right now. So he's gonna go Bandit. Um, okay, I'm gonna activate that. And surprisingly, he's gonna give me a free log EQ here because that's gonna give me tower damage and also take out the magic archer so that was a really bad play on his end there because it's just giving me free tower damage that could be a little difficult to stop but a tornado should be good here and that ended up being a bad magic archer he probably wasn't expecting me oh towers hitting the magic archer that's really clutch so i don't have to worry about it staying alive Let's send in a hog as soon as that pops, and is he gonna get down a Pekka? Yes, he does, but we're perfectly fine, and the hog even gets a shot, even with the bandit. That's insane. Spacing out the queen here, so he's unable to fireball both. Go for guards here, and the guards and the tombstone together are gonna just shred the Pekka. Look at that. And then this might be the push where it's just GG at this point. Did he just give up? Yeah, he gave up. He knew it was over. Like, when he spent all of his elixir there and didn't get, you know, any damage whatsoever, he knew he was done for at that point. So, that is going to be it for the video. Even though we didn't complete the grand challenge, you know, we ended off of a couple, you know, good ladder wins. And uh, let me know if you guys want me to do that in the future. Instead of starting up a new grand challenge, should I just hop in the ladder with the deck? Um, I know some of you probably would just prefer ladder anyway, but some people do like grand challenge videos So when it's beginning of the season, that's why I tend to do them and you can see there's still a lot of the season left And by the way, Ian's still first in the world with the deck um, Which is w why I saw the deck was having success. So I decided to make a video of it. I mean, obviously I'm not as good as he is with the deck He's actually the best hog player in the game. I know Last time I said that in a video people were salty and were like, what about Oyasu? Okay, the stats don't lie What's Oyasu's best finish with Hog? Third, right? What's Ian's best finish with Hog? Second. Ian is better than Oyasu. Hate me if you want, it's just the facts. And that's going to be it for the video. Make sure to like the video if you guys did end up enjoying it. Subscribe if you guys aren't subscribed already. And thanks again. Until next time, guys.